Hello, you can all relax. There's no math in this video. The title of this video was prompted by a video that I came across on the channel of Flat Earth Addict, which was entitled The Space Station is a U-2 Spy Plane. Hey, hello there people. Joseph here. We're going to take a look at the theory of the International Space Station. Now, I absolutely had to make this video tonight. It's not an experiment, but I just thought to myself, hang on a second. This is unbelievable, this picture that I've just recently seen of the ISS. Because I was only speaking in my last video about how it notoriously looks like a, a B... Uh, not a B-2, a U-2 spy plane. And my goodness me, you've really got to take a look at this picture. I mean, really. I mean, look at this. That just looks strangely like a U-2, doesn't it? And it's not the only picture either, because look at this one. This one also looks like a U-2. Now imagine if you had add-ons on the bottom of that U-2. From a distance, it could look like that. Maybe there's some sort of image projection device that's underneath it, you know, to give illusions of the solar panels. And obviously, you know, we can look at the sheer size of this aircraft, you know, in, in several shots. I'll just stick a couple up there so you can see them. And it kind of got me thinking. I thought, NASA, they probably use the U-2 spy plane. And then, I couldn't believe it. I could not believe this. I came across this. Look at that. How about that for a smoking gun? Um, I mean, really. Check it out. It says it quite clearly on, on the side of the tin. NASA. So they, they use the U-2 spy planes. And, and these things, you know, they, they travel thousands of miles per hour. And they also go to heights of sort of... I think the record is about just above 80,000 feet. And um, here's a pic of, of one flying, you know, through some sort of binocular. So is that a U-2 spy plane with a big NASA logo on it? Not exactly. I did a little bit of research on the internet and here's what I found. The Lockheed ER-2 aircraft, or Earth Research 2 aircraft, is a later development of the U-2 spy plane, which was specifically developed for NASA. It has an operating altitude of up to 70,000 feet, similar to the U-2 spy plane, and a similar takeoff weight of 32,000 pounds or more. And it's designated as a high altitude airborne science aircraft or a flying laboratory. Does this sound similar to, say, another laboratory above the Earth that flies around over the Earth? All of the information and specifications I mentioned previously, as well as the ones I'm about to discuss, I found on the NASA website for this aircraft, which I will include in the, uh, the links below the video. But their main activities they claim that this aircraft does is celestial observations. So do they have a telescope on this aircraft? Atmospheric chemistry and dynamics, oceanic processes, and it also has four pressurized compartments that can be used uh, for any quote unquote experiment. And the side activities include electronic sensor research and development, satellite calibration, and satellite data validation. So it appears that they're doing things with satellites with this aircraft as well. Another note I found on this website was that they continue to employ an unspecified number of U-2 spy planes for the purpose of simulating satellite configurations and satellite experiments. So again, I see that they're using these high altitude aircraft for some sort of satellite um, experiments and satellite simulations. So could these high altitude aircraft be actually taking the place of satellites? 
Is NASA using an ER-2 aircraft to represent the ISS? If you look at the photo of the supposed ISS, you could see how, since the aircraft would be appear larger than the ISS because it's closer to the ground than the ISS would be, and you could use uh, various lighting banks uh, to make it more appear apparent, uh, various uh, mock-ups on the outside of it that could be deployed once it reaches very high altitude because the atmospheric drag would be very low up there. And they wouldn't even have to be like fake mock-up modules. They could actually be sensor arrays or other experimentation devices that it's actually using in its operation. So could they also use the Lockheed ER-2 to simulate weightless slash freefall conditions the way they do with the Vomit Comet? Let's have a let's do a comparison of the Lockheed ER-2 to the current Vomit Comet. The previous model that NASA used to simulate weightless or freefall conditions was the KC-135. 35A aircraft. That's now been retired and it is now replaced with a Boeing 727-200F. This is their freight model. If you compare the two uh, uh, aircraft, the ER-2 and the Boeing 727, the Lockheed ER-2 has a much higher ceiling of 70,000 feet as opposed to the 42,000 feet of the Boeing 727. However, the cabin width of the Lockheed ER-2, which can only be estimated at about 8 feet, the, the Boeing 727 has a much wider cabin width. So there's a lot more play in simulating a ISS interior. Uh, there's also a lower payload, so you can't put much on the ER-2 as compared to the 727, which is a solid freight aircraft. But the max range of the ER-2 is 3,000 nautical miles as opposed to 1,700 nautical miles on the Boeing 727. So it has a much larger range. So if you took the four interior compartments of the Lockheed ER-2 and strung them all together into one compartment, and then perhaps rather than trying to create the interior of the ISS, rather just simply green screen the entire interior of those four compartments. You could actually just fill in the interior after uh, you finish video, doing the video of the weightless conditions. So why go to the trouble of building a whole green screen and having to do computer generated imaging for the interior of the ISS? Well, the great advantage of the Lockheed ER-2 is that you're, because it's up at a much higher ceiling, of, you could have almost twice as long of simulated weightless or free fall conditions because of the higher altitude that they can continue to do a free fall simulation. The drop could go much, much longer than with the uh, Boeing 727 Vomit Comet. And also another thing I thought of is that another way that it could simulate the ISS is because it's taking all kinds of photographs and video of the Earth as it goes over it. These videos could simply be fed back and stitched in to the imaging for the ISS uh, live feed so you could actually have pretty close to actual conditions below the ISS as it travels over the Earth, uh, you know, because you just might have to do a little bit of curving and things to show that there's a curvature there, and um, you'd have to maybe do a little bit of stitching at the edges of it. But it could be used, actually, the, the photographic imaging that it actually is part of the ER2 could provide you with your simulated live feed on the ISS. In conclusion, if you look at the numbers and specifications that I put in this video, you can see how the Lockheed ER-2 
and their inventory of U-2 spy planes could do a very good job of actually simulating the ISS from space.